Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about Cisco Discovery Protocol, CDP, and the Link Layer Discovery Protocol, LLDP. They're both very similar protocols. CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, is a Cisco proprietary layer 2 protocol, and it's used to share information with other directly connected Cisco equipment, such as the operating system and the IP address. That information will be shared between connected devices. That aids in troubleshooting by allowing administrators to map out how Cisco devices are connected to each other. For example, say that you're in New York and there is a problem in Sydney and you don't know about the network topology in Sydney. Well, as long as you can jump on a one device there, then you could use show CDP neighbors to map out how all the other Cisco devices are connected to each other. So it's a very useful troubleshooting tool. Even if you know what the topology should look like, you can use show CDP neighbor to check that the device is there and detected at layer two. CDP is enabled by default on most Cisco equipment, not just on routers and switches, also on the firewalls, and even things like software, like Cisco Unified Communications Manager, which is used to control IP phones, and even the IP phones as well will run CDP. So if you go onto a switch, which has got the Cisco Unified Communications Manager server and IP phones plugged in there, you'll be able to get information about those devices. CDP works at layer two, so it's not necessary for the device to have an IP address on it for it to be detected by its neighbors. The commands for CDP, so it's enabled by default. If you want to disable it, you can do a no CDP run. To turn it back on, on again, it's CDP run. That's done at global configuration. A reason you would maybe want to disable CDP is it can be seen as a security concern if you're in a highly secure environment, such as maybe in a bank, you don't want people to be able to see what devices are plugged in there, so you could disable CDP. No CDP run will disable it globally on the device. Um, you can also do a disable at the interface level as well with no CDP enable. So say you've got a switch on the edge of your network and you want CDP to be enabled on the internal facing interfaces, you want to disable it on the external facing interface so you don't give up information to another organization. So you can do a, show CD, a no CDP enable at the interface level. Our verification commands, show CDP, will show if it's enabled or not, also the timers, etc. And the commands that can be used to verify the attached devices are show CDP neighbors and show CDP neighbors detail. Show CDP neighbors will give you a nice brief summary view. Show CDP neighbors detail will give more detail, including the IP addresses on the neighbors. So let's have a look at this in the lab again. So I'm back on my switch again, and I'll do a show CDP to see if CDP is enabled or not. And yes, it is, it's sending CDP packets every 60 seconds. So that is the default. If I do a show CDP neighbor, then it will show all the Cisco devices that are plugged into this switch. So the detail it gives me, it gives the name, the host name of the device. This is another reason why it's a good idea to set a host name so that if you do a show CDP neighbor, it's gonna give you a description of what that device actually is. I haven't set any 
host names in the lab here yet, so it's not very descriptive. It just says a router or a switch. Then it will show me the local interface that is connected on my side. And over on the right, the port ID is the interface that it is plugged into on the far side device. And it also says what the platform of that device is. So I've got some 2811 routers that are plugged into my switch and also some 3568 switches. To get more detail, I can do a show CDP neighbor detail. And this will give me more verbose output. So I can see here my router that its IP address is 192.168.0.1. So this again is very useful if you need to find out an IP address of a neighbor so that you can telnet or SSH onto it for troubleshooting. It also tells me the platform it's running on is a Cisco 2811 router, the iOS version that is running on there as well, and some other similar information. If I hit the space bar, I can scroll through and I can see the information for the other devices as well. Okay, so that was CDP. Let's have a look at how to disable it on an interface. So I'll go to configure terminal, and then let's do a do show IP interface brief just to see what interfaces I've got on here. I'll just disable it on the first physical interface. So that's interface fast ethernet zero slash one. So I can go interface config, interface fast ethernet zero slash one and no CDP enable. So the switch will now stop sending out CDP information on that particular interface. It's still going to do it on the other interfaces though. So usually I would do that if this was facing an external entity. If I'm in a highly secure environment and I just want to completely disable CDP on the switch, then I'll exit back down to global configuration and do a no CDP run. If I now go down to the enable prompt and do a show CDP, you can see that CDP is not enabled. Okay, so that was everything I needed to tell you about CDP. I'll go back to the slides for LLDP. So LLDP is the link layer discovery protocol. This came out a lot later than CDP did. And where CDP is Cisco proprietary, LLDP is an open standard. So it's supported on most vendors devices and it provides similar information to CDP. It does have some differences though. CDP will always be enabled by default on Cisco routers and switches, but with LLDP, it depends on the switch and version, whether it will be enabled or disabled by default. LLDP is only supported on physical interfaces. CDP is also supported on virtual sub interfaces as well. You'll learn more about those in the VLAN section later. With LLDP, it can only discover up to one device per port. CDP is able to discover multiple devices per physical port because it does support those virtual sub interfaces and LLDP can discover Linux servers, CDP cannot. Our commands to configure this on a Cisco router or switch to turn it on or off, at global configuration, we've got LLDP run and no LLDP run to turn it off. So similar command that we had for CDP. To disable it at the interface level, we do it for both transmit and receive separately. So there's a no LLDP transmit to disable sending out information and a no LLDP receive to disable receiving information. Our verification commands are again similar to CDP. Show LLDP will show if it's enabled or not. Show LLDP neighbors will show a summary of our neighbors and show LLDP neighbors detail will show more verbose output, including the IP addresses configured on those devices. Okay, so that's everything I needed to tell you about CDP and LLDP. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad-free 
right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.